just going to wait for this to sync up over on my end. Great. Good afternoon and welcome to the 1215 PRC meeting project review committee meeting in accordance with the COVID-19 pandemic emergency protocol and open meetings law this meeting is being is occurring virtually and no in person attendance is permitted. The PRC is an advisory committee that reviews major site plans and projects requiring a recommendation to the manager of zoning. This committee is made up of city staff and several several urban design specialists. The meeting is informal and will, co will consist of two parts. Part one will include a brief project description uh, by the applicant, followed by a question and answer with the committee. Part two will include deliberations and a vote to provide a recommendation to the manager of zoning. Before we get started, I will have everyone introduce themselves. I'll start and then I'll call on everyone. So my name is Anna Keller. I'm the city's site plan review coordinator and I'm staff to this committee. And then I'll go to Roseanne. Hi, I'm Roseanne Khalil. I'm the manager of zoning and a member of the committee. Uh, Kevin. Hi, uh, my name is Kevin Kelly and I'm the manager of the Office of City Planning. Holly. Um, I'm Holly, Holly Barrett. I'm the city engineer for the city. Dana. Hi, I'm Dana Miller. I'm deputy commissioner of neighborhood and business development for the city. Donna. Hi, I'm Donna Clements. I'm the civil engineer with DES Street Design. Sabrina. Hi, my name is Sabrina Boykin. I'm from Architectural Services with the City of Rochester. Matt. Matt Vanderwall, uh, representative for code enforcement for the City of Rochester. Roger. Uh, Roger Brown, architect. And David. Uh, Dave Benetti, SWBR architect and planner. Great. Um, with that being said, so our, for, oh, and actually, Marsha. Oh, you got to come over here, though. Uh, uh, Marsha Berry, back again. Glad to hey. see you. <laughs> Marsha uh, works in the zoning office, um, assistant to the manager of zoning, and she is a site plan reviewer. Um, so, Reza uh, is our applicant's representative for the first item on our agenda. So I'll have Reza turn on his video and I will announce this project and then pass the mic to Reza to kind of give us a brief overview. Uh, Reza, feel free to direct me to certain um, designs or drawings and I can pull those up and share my screen. So this uh, is our first case. It's file number SP0062122. It's a major site plan review. Its address is 362 West Main Street. It's located in our Center City Main Street District. Um, and this request is to construct a one-story, 2,130-square-foot retail building and to reconfigure the existing gas station, which includes the demolition of a one-story, 434-square-foot building, the removal of four gas pumps, and the modification of the fuel canopy. The two existing gas pumps are to remain. All right, Reza, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Reza Armanish. I'm the architect for this project. Uh, we've been working on this project almost a year now. Basically, the intent is to demolish the uh, small, um, about like 400 some square foot building and remove four um, uh, fuel um, pumps and the canopy and uh, just keep uh, two pumps and one canopy. One canopy is going to, going to be, uh, the, it's pretty new. The one on the uh, facing the West Main is pretty good shape, but once they cut it, they have to basically um, uh, modify that by Valero. Usually that's done by the manufacturer. Whoever sells their fuel to them, that's what they do. So now um, the uh, project itself is about uh, 2,130 square foot. Um, uh, we have uh, stamped concrete around the uh, perimeter of the building on the south and on the west, uh, no, no, on, the so on the south and on the east side. And of course, there's a, uh, there's a walk path all the way to the main street, uh, uh, which it shows there. Now, um, we've done some grading, um, uh, but no matter how you grade this site, it's a sloping toward a uh, Toro Bridge, so there was no other way to prevent the water spilling into the right of the way. The only way was to put a full trench drain all the way uh, 
which was costly, but that was the only way I discussed it with the owner. There's no other way to uh, manage the storm water other than put in the trench. So that's done. Uh, on the uh, west, on the south, East portion, but we, we added some green. There's an island right now, there's a rail, which is right on West Main Street. Uh, we put some planting and uh, some uh, trees and so forth. Uh, now, they, uh, there's also in that island, the new five foot wide island that we proposed. We also have a monumental, uh, monumental um, a sign there. I was discussing this issue with the owner. Owner was trying to see if we can move it to the 10 foot island to the uh, uh, west of it. So uh, that's pretty much with the thing. The building is pretty straightforward, one story high. I try to- um, Ava, could I, you direct me to the elevations? Yeah, Do you know I, what the sheet number is? So I can pull it up because this would be- 20, my elevation start at 20. Oh, okay. I just want to. Um, it's them under buildings. No, yeah, yeah, yeah building design. Um, I just want to pull up the elevations because this is. Oh, here we are. There this is. is one thing that this group is going to be very uh, focused on. Right. The elevation basically, I have uh, two different color bricks, and then uh, we have stone cap on top. Um, I try to. Uh, uh, work it such that it's at least somewhat representative of the West May. If you go about a mile, not even a mile, half a mile to the West, there's some older building near the Susan St. Beantony area. So I try to be uh, some harmonious with the design of those buildings. So that's how we arrived at that. Um, the uh, South, East, West will be, as you see it on the back, the zoning uh, allow allows to put um, corrugated one and a half inch 26 gate. But of course, this is one and a half, uh, one inch 26 gate. This is 24 gauge and uh, one and a half inch on the back side, which is basically all you see is the warehouses that uh, more slumber has. Uh, that's pretty much it. Inside, as far as uh, transparency, we try to provide transparency as much as possible. Uh, at the front uh, on the site, I didn't because this area is a little bit um, a rough area. Um, even even if you go to the existing building, you see bullet holes in the security windows that they have. So uh, that's why we didn't put any windows on the east, west, and the north. Um, but on the south, where it's facing the main street, we provided as much uh, transparency as possible. Uh, inside, basically the grocery store, the small takeout food, a small bathroom, uh, accessible bathroom, uh, a little storage and a little office. And that's pretty much in a nutshell. Great. And then um, to wrap things up, what I think I will do is have the site plan reviewer just to say a few words. You guys received a copy of that recommendation, but just a little bit as to why um, this is being referred to uh, this project review committee, um, because it is a major site plan. It's located in the downtown um, district. The specific de design standards for downtown development, this is not meeting them. Um, and I'll just have the reviewer just say a few words as to that, why that is. Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, as you are aware, the, the intention for Main Street was to have five to 15 story buildings. But when you get to this portion of Main Street, um, we it's kind of lost what, what Main Street was and it peters out and the end of Center City is at Canal Street and then it becomes a C2 district. So this is really an odd part of West Main Street. So really what you have to do with this particular project is assume that there's never going to be a multi-story building constructed here. It has been a gas station for decades. And uh, because they are reusing existing pumps and reusing existing underground tanks, um, we are limited in the placement of the building. It can no longer be moved up front. We are limited in the number of stories that it can have. And um, it's a matter of whether or not this building can suffice as a downtown service station. Surely downtown people are going to want their gas and their conveniences and things of that sort. So it's really a matter of whether 
perpetuating this as a gas station site is is the appropriate thing at this point. Obviously, it's a use that's permitted in the district, and most of Center City is all design oriented. And this is really just trying to put a very functional use in an area that has that was intended for grandeur, but no longer has it. Great, thank you everyone who presented. And now I will let the committee, now is the committee's opportunity to speak. Um, same goes for you all. If you want me to pull up a design or drawing, just let me know. Anna, could we see the existing site? Um, hmm. Whether you do it visually or what's on there now, what does that look like now? Sure, I'll yeah. pull up. If I'll pull up Google Maps, that might be yeah. a good. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay, yeah, let me do that right now. By right now, I mean in several seconds. <laughs> well, I had another question too. While you're doing that. This looks very similar to the gas station on the east side near the expressway entrance. Um, I think that, okay, that's a Valero, right. Okay. The canopy, that doesn't, does that go away or is that? No, this canopy that you're pointing at, at the front, that will stay. But in the back, if you drive a little bit west, please, there's quite a bit of all that canopy in the back, it will be all gone. The pumps, they, they took the uh, fuel pumps out, but uh, they still the columns, the uh, uh, bollards and everything is in place. That, that, they, they will, that will be all gone. They'll just keep the front. But the front, okay, the front stays. So the building actually becomes quite a prominent piece here. Yes, sir. And just, as I said, I mentioned it, look, the building, which was a um, uh, uh, Dan Mussine building, uh, was on the east side of town, a relatively new one. The two buildings look relatively similar. Uh, Anyway, I, I think the one you're referring to, Roger, is more of an art deco. Yeah. Yeah. But Don't it you does think? have the sort of, yeah, I mean, the massing is the same, but the, the details are different. The details are quite deco. a bit different. I, okay. Yeah, but that and sort of centerpiece and the two sides, you're right. It's very similar. It's nice about, this looks like there's a lot of brick and a lot of, um, you know, sort of richer materials on this one. So, so Roger, um, that's a that's a great point, and I guess my my question then is, um, you know, that canopy and the the design of the canopy doesn't seem at all harmonious with with the building. So, the existing shed that's a mini mart now that will be demolished. Will the new building be connected to that canopy, or the existing building is completely demolished? Right. Um, so the does the canopy, new building connect to the canopy or is it just? No, it's not connected. No. As you see, it's not connected. Uh, okay, as you see, see, this is a right. Valero. And Valero pretty much that's what the okay. canopy is, uh, right. looks like most places. Uh, okay. But so canopy, those canopies will exist exactly the way they are. Same color, the same signage, everything? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, I agree with you, Dana. This is Dave. I. I the, the building is a, uh, itself is a vast improvement over what's there and uh, is stylized and is actually somewhat, uh, in, you know, our throwback in some ways to Morse and uh, even to Nick Tahoe's. It means that with the brick appointments and, and uh, parapets and things like that. But I, I'm not sure I get the juxtaposition with the, with the uh, canopy. Well, the canopy, this portion exists. You're just cutting it on the back side, which I put a note on it. It says cut existing modify as required by company who the fuel company. So um, now what we could do, we can discuss the issue with the Valero and the owner and to see, to be honest with you, I don't like the canopy. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't match the brick. It doesn't match nothing. It just, uh, uh, I, I'm not happy with it, but that's, I was 
trying to reduce costs to extend possible. But if the committee suggests, I can take this to the owner and uh, go discuss some issues with Bolero that um, they want a little bit more elaborate, more detailed canopy as what what as opposed to what it is there. Well, yeah, thank you. That that maybe, yeah. That's a maybe, but but I'm interested, Marcia. Was you were getting at some of the zoning issues? You were talking about the the desirable heights. I don't think we're going to see too many five to fifteen story buildings <laughs> over there, but that would be nice. Um, <clears throat> are there any? Are there? Is there a transparency issue with the quantity of transparency on the front? That was one of my questions. It would meet the transparency requirements for a C two district for that frontage, which is rare for us to achieve from a, from a convenience store. So yeah. it, it is providing more than it usually is. Um, in terms of the canopies, I, I've been in discussions with the fire departments. Canopies are no longer required as for fire suppression. However, they opt often to do the canopies so people are under them so they're when they're filling their tanks they're not in the rain or, or what whatever so they function sometimes can be more much more of a decorative function than a health and safety function and there really is no requirement that they have to have signage on the canopy so the canopy really doesn't have to have the valero signs or whatever that those could be certainly uh painted white or something or something that is more compatible with the building? Well, for sure, the um, canopy colors, if they could uh, be in, in more harmony with the colors of the building, that would be a, a vast improvement. Certainly, I don't know, the sign Valero, it, it is going to be maintained as a Valero station. Yes, sir. At, at uh -huh. least at this point, yes, sir. At this point, that's what the intent is. Um, yeah. But there is a gas station that way back in Irondequite I worked on as on Titus, which the, basically the face of it is like they has dentals, details, and then it's kind of a if a system on the canopy, which marries the building a lot better than these metal ones. Um, but um, if directed by the committee, I will discuss it uh, and I'll push push it myself because sometimes I'm in between the hard rock and hard surface because the owner wants to limit the expense expenses and I want to do certain things but I'm not able to but uh, if the recommendation comes um, that we modify the canopy then be it uh, I will work on it and then I'll get a better something that is at least it marries the building a little bit better. So Roger, I'm gonna vault into the unknown. <laughs> okay. What 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 if we go completely the other direction? And the canopies are gonna be the canopies, and whether we like the turquoise or not, if the building shape and its provisions inside and size and all that, but it became an a very modern uh you know, metal panel and, and Marsh's would kick me under the table. I'm very sorry, but I mean, <laughs> there's a whole other approach on this. I mean, that the area is obviously it's historic. It's a Susan B area. Uh, there's a lot, you know, you've got, but you got 911 across the street and by golly, 911 is uh, very, uh, you know, modern. Uh, could this be a modern uh, solution where it didn't have to emulate traditional forms and be very ultra clean? Anna put up fast track, I see. I remember when, yeah. Well, I, I have to admit that I, I sort of like the building itself and that if you're able to change the canopy, uh, to be more complementary to the building. Uh, I, th I think that that would work great. I'm amazed at, at all the brick and the, you know, the, the detail, it's interesting. If you go on a gas station that I did on the corner of Hudson and Upper Falls, we used brick and it was successful. Um, Do you wanna give uh, me that address? Uh, I think it's, it's almost right on the corner, 600 maybe, it's on the corner of Hudson and Upper Falls. 
right on the corner. I'd like to second uh, what Mr. Brown was saying about, you know, I think the building is, is nice. I really like uh, the treatment of it and just doing something to the canopy to make it go a little bit more would seem desirable from, you know, uh, my opinion. And I like the colors, how it's drawing in with the adjacent buildings. That, that's Clifford. You got to go down south. And of okay, course, Anna. the Dana Miller is going to tell, like, I need you to tell me how Keep to going. get around Keep the going. city. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Stop right there, right at the corner. Yep, right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree with what Holly said and what, what Roger said. Um, you know, context sensitive design is is all well and good until we're looking at buildings that aren't designed very well. Oh, there you uh, go. Interesting. Yeah. This other building was done about a year and a half ago. Oh, that's nice. I like to play with brick. Oh. Wow. I love you the columns. It. I love the columns under the uh, awning over the <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can wrap the columns at the 362 with brick too. And that might be smart. Um, I can do that. That's not a problem. Um, okay. My main problem is that blue, Valero, and white. I'm not happy with it, but like I said, uh, owners always have this cost limitation <laughs> that we have to abide by. But if it comes uh, from the board, I'll just go to them. I said, this is what it is. That's what we need to do in order to get a to get the city's blessing. Simple. Hey, Anna. Yes. Are there specific de design items that you're looking for our input on? All of or them. Okay. This is, yeah, is, basically downtown, the design guidelines, we're not keeping, it basically needs waiver from every design guidelines for the center city district. So we kind of are just getting, we just want to get a general feeling or temperature check from you all. Um, but there's is there nothing anything specific. that requires a variance? No, this would all be manager of zoning. It would just all be evaluated as part of the site plan itself. So no, these are waivers that the manager of zoning themselves could do via the site plan process, but we wouldn't want to do such things without having this team look at it first. Also, Marsha made some good comments on last time that I got the comments about the wall on the back, the block wall. I think it's structurally sound, but I've been talking to the Joy Gallery because I did an addition for the Joy Gallery is in that, that's in the historic district. And I was talking to the professor, uh, he teaches uh, painting at RIT, if they could get some students to propose some uh, painting for that wall, then we could get approval from the city. And then even that retaining wall on the back can be uh, a lot better than what it is. Um, With that retaining wall, uh, you'll be able to do this new construction without any effect on that retaining wall? Yes, I'm I'm not close, but almost six foot, more than six foot from it. Uh, so right now, there are cars parked there and they, they're usually a lot of times car parked there. So if they could handle that. Now, that, when you look at, at the end of it, end of the retaining wall, that's cracks or because the uh, more slumber has been hitting it. You can, you can, but my suggestion was when uh, Marsha brought the issue and well, it was a well, uh, uh, a well point that she made. Uh, we were gonna parge it, put caps on it, uh, either stone cap or uh, uh, concrete, but I prefer stone. And then uh, basically parge both sides of the wall. And then uh, if we can get it approved to have some kind of a, uh, painting, I don't mean crazy painting, something really subtle and get approval from the city. And if it's approved, then we can also utilize that wall as a canvas. It Is the wall like, in good shape? The wall, for the most part, I've seen this wall for about 15 years because they wanted to add to this building way back. It hasn't changed. The only change that I see is the front that you see the cracks. And yeah. that's because the truck hit it. You can tell 
that's not a uh, structural cracks or it's not a uh, uh, expansion or contraction crack. It's more, it, it, it's, it's impact type cracks. Um, mm -hmm. um, if I could interrupt, um, the area where you see those cars parked, that's actually a uh, city right of way. So the condition of that wall is of concern to both DES and to us. So confirmation that that is strong enough to support all the demolition work in the new building is going to be something that's going to be required as part of this review. And I think that will be addressed in the site plan review process itself. In terms of the recommendation that we need from this board, I know Matt kind of called me out here that I might be too vague for you all, but it sounds like some of your snap judgments about this place was about the canopies tie-in to the building design. Do you guys have any more specifics that you would ask for from this applicant? I just wanna wrap that conversation up and then see if there's any other pressing matters and then we can kind of get them on their way with a specific recommendation. Uh, my recommendation, so I guess to be clear and just to sort of reiterate what a lot of others are saying, um, I, I like the building itself. I think it's a, a refreshing take on gas stations. Um, I like the brick, I like the color. I think it would be nice to find a way to make the canopy blend in a little bit more with the facade of the building itself. That's my comment. Great, thank you. And and I have um, just one comment, and it's um, you know it's perhaps not completely relevant to what we're trying to do here today, but um, it was a comment made about the transparency, and you know what I'm seeing in this elevation is is really really nice. Lots of windows. Um, lots of open space, um, <clears throat> but as we saw in the example on Upper Falls Boulevard, what almost always happens, and so this is just something I would like to be taken back to the operators, they almost always immediately fill all of those windows in with signs, <laughs> as you can see here. And so you get all that really <clears throat> great transparency that all gets eliminated because it gets filled in with signs. and. You know, it just, every operator does that. And it's um, it's really troubling that we can't just have a store that doesn't have a hundred signs for a quick draw and the lottery and pizza and everything else. So if, if that message can get back to the operator, I would, I would appreciate it. Great point. Sure, I'll, I'll bring that. I don't like him. I, I don't like those signs either, but um, I think that's something maybe reinforcement can do something about it. Uh, once they get a couple of tickets, they take them all. <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but uh, I don't mean to be mean, but sometimes uh, no matter what or how much um, I tell them, you can't put these lights on them, this flashing light, or you can't put all these signs, but um, they don't listen to me. The only thing that if sometimes if the city um, uh, inspectors, the code officers, they can just at least issue a couple of warnings if you don't take it off, who can uh, cite. Yeah, you. That at some point, maybe the city will consider it a source of revenue to just keep enforcing on these because <laughs> they're everywhere. Yes, it's just unsightly, but... Uh, I have no authority to tell the owner not to do it. I, I suggest, but um, yeah, once they get a ticket, they listen. <laughs> okay. Okay. We we will uh, we will see what we can do about giving out more tickets. <laughs> don't, don't mention my name, please. <laughs> I forgot to tell everyone this is being streamed live on the mayor's yeah. YouTube channel. But that's that's a, you're, you're recording. You're being recorded. <laughs> no, that's all good. I'm just suggesting it's just. They close it and then you can't even see inside. I think when you see inside the store, more likely you will go in. Right. Okay, so in the recommendation that you received from Marsha, she acknowledged, you know, certain things that weren't like I, Matt had asked me the question, what aren't they meeting? And I said everything in the CCD. Um, we do see here that they are taking a stab at at least uh, incorporating some of those building elements as a base, mid-level, and like top section. 
Um, and then as you all pointed out, there are sensitive to materials. So they've selected brick to kind of, kind of uh, boost it where they may have fallen short in other areas. Um, and then it sounds like in, a, in addition to the transparency, there would be a firm advi advi note of caution about, when, about covering up the windows. And then basically the biggest thing in order for this to receive your stamp of approval, you're gonna to wanna to see more about how the canopy plays into the proposed building elevation. Okay. Well, one thing, I, I mean, the, the idea and then the way he, he talked about the idea of maybe um, putting a brick or a brick treatment around uh, the existing columns might be an interesting uh, and, you know, nice approach to what to do, not, quite this way, but um, you could do it in a simpler way, but that would add a nice a, a nice appearance to the, um, to the canopy. Um, is it at the point where the committee would be comfortable voting to approve it um, with one of the conditions being that, um, you know, brick covering of the columns and modifications to the canopy more consistent with the design of the building being incorporated during site plan review. I mean, do you think you've given enough comment that you're comfortable with, with us and the staff finishing that off or do you, do you need to see it again? Oh, that's an interesting question. I don't think you need to see it again, no. But, but in the future, can continue to talk like that because there are many cases where if we had seen it again, it might've improved situations. Mm. Well, anyway. you all seem to be on the same page in terms of what you're looking for with the canopy. So I just yeah. to simplify things, if you're comfortable with that, you know, maybe we could reach a resolution that can be approved. Um, you know, it will be Marsha working with them on it. Um, and myself and Anna. So I just raise that as an option. Yeah, we've certainly done that before. I think it's very reasonable. Uh, one thing I was thinking or wondering about, we've had, we've struggled with retail commercial uh, establishments. We have one on uh, Mount Hope that we spent quite a bit of time discussing in the last three or four months <clears throat> where the glass ends up being extremely dark and you can't see in, uh, you can't see patrons. Uh, it's a safety issue. Uh, you don't know if the place is open. So I, a question here is, are we going to be going, uh, will the glass be transparent in the classic sense of transparency? And then second to that, because I, we basically have a south facing elevation, might we consider bringing the canopy color uh, into the, onto the building with small discrete awnings that bring that color onto the building so that I begin to connect the two together uh, and I'm dealing with some solar issues because in the summer, it's gonna be warm facing south uh, without a, uh, a solar browns or solar gray glass. But we really just don't like the solar gray or, or dark glass because uh, you know safety is an issue. You can't see inside and it is gonna be south facing. So just an, you know, a questionable idea about whether uh, we've used canopies before, we've got them uh, in College Town on the, uh, whatever it is, the CVS or the Walgreens or whatever up there. And that seems to work pretty well uh, to add a little color on the outside of the building. I just wanna nip the first comment in the bud real quick um, in regards to the tinting that you experienced on the windows at the previous PRC meeting. Um, so similar to how you can't have stickers covering uh, the windows as we saw that one example was in violation of, there's also that same, a similar requirement for, you know, that windows need to be clear. So yeah. putting, putting some kind of tint on a window or putting a sticker on a window would um, be an enforceable action. So uh, it is part of the zoning code where you can't do those things. Yeah, good. The only thing that is that windows would have is low E fields. And uh, in order Fine. to make it a little, but it's pretty much clear with low E, but when you put low E, it kind of kind of dampens it a little bit, darkens it a little bit, the shade, and not to the like that is bronze or uh, different colors, but it, it kind of makes it a little bit, a tinge darker than the clear, clear. And since as the gentleman mentioned uh, that 
that's south facing. I gotta put some low E on those windows, otherwise yeah. that place will be cooking uh, in summer. Okay. Um, following Roseanne's train of thought, are you guys ready? Are I? This is my first PRC meeting. Do you guys typically like to hear the next case before you deliberate further and vote, or um, how do you want to take it? Do you want to? Have you do? You, would you consider this conversation your deliberations, or would you prefer separate deliberations, resulting in a vote? Hmm. We typically deliberate afterwards, but All right. we've had a pretty substantial discussion, so okay, it might not um, be necessary. Do we have any more questions for the applicant? Then I, I would like to hear um, Reza. I would like to hear your your viewpoint on the awning suggestion to bring color to the building. Awning, it would cover my brick. <laughs> I would like to, I, I actually did some studies. I can send you those. Um, it just, it took away from the actually face of the building. Um, but I can incorporate that and you can, I can send you what I had before. Um, uh, to be honest with you, my main concern is like the board concern is the canopy. I don't like that canopy. I can put some brick around the columns, but even the top canopy, I don't like. It just doesn't match none of the building around that area. It's not even not, not the building we are proposing, but even if you go further west, it's uh, nothing like that. Um, unless you go to Sunoco, then that's, that's different, but it's just, uh, uh, but other than that, we tried, but it didn't kind of, I don't know, somehow it didn't work. It, it kind of reduces the transparency too, because I have to put it right above the windows, sort of. Uh, so it reduces uh, visibility, transparency. So that's why we took it off. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of ways to do it that would act as a solar shade with a very small one foot, maybe 18 inch only would come out from the building, act as a solar shade beyond a one to three pitch. Uh, very, very small uh, canopy, Add, bring that Valero color. If, if Valero is going to be the, the uh, uh, sponsor, that turquoise is not going to go away, is my guess. That's just not going to. So, But you can try. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that, it, it, you're probably right about that. Uh, it's not going to go away, but may, maybe it will. Um, but the idea of carrying the color over to the building is interesting. You have to be really sensitive to that. Very small, very small, very, very small. Canopies. Yeah, and that's the problem though. Sometimes those small, small is, is too small and you gotta be really careful. Yeah, I understand. About the scale of that, you know, so. Is there, is there maybe a compromise approach with the canopy where the facade, if you will, of the canopy is better matching the building, like we're saying, but then the turquoise and yellow coloring brand is, is a sign essentially that's mounted to a, a portion of it. It's not fully covering the full facade of that canopy, but it's sort of mounted to it. So they get to keep their branding, but the, the canopy looks more like the building. I know it's not a lot of space to work with, but it's just a thought. And I do worry that that might look a little sort of tacked on. And just, since Reza doesn't really want to do canopies, if you take out the advantage of it being sort of the incorporation of the color, um, I'm not sure it, it's worth pushing to have them. I don't know. And then it becomes more like a sign. And so it's going to count towards the sign. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we have approved canopies without... Um, the, the signage on them, it because this needs so many waivers, every element that is on the on the building and on the canopies becomes an important thing. So if the Valero, uh, what are they? The trademarks aren't on the canopy, they can include that on their, they're doing a ground sign on, the, on West Main Street already, which would identify that it was a Valero gas station. So if, we need a contributing element out of the canopies, then that can be a condition of our approval. 
Yeah, because currently uh, the, it it's says the Susan B. Anthony district. It's a important part of West Maine. Currently, there's like seven or eight or nine areas points where it says Valero. <laughs> <laughs> Do they really need them all? No, I don't think they. I, I, I think I'm going to argue against that with the owner. Um, I agree with Mark, uh, uh, Marsha that um, uh, uh, that if they they can still put a sign with their logo, but let me do like I did. And it works pretty good. And people, the neighborhood in that area, it's different neighborhood. I know it's more residential. They're happy, but the canopy is stucco. It's EFES. It's tan. So the building is red brick. And then the canopy, so it kind of matches. And we had some uh, tan color, like metal and stuff like that on the building. Uh, I can uh, take a picture and send it to Anna for you guys to all review. Um, like I said, I'm, I don't like the canopy myself. Do we have any but more questions? From the board, I can go to the owner say the board wants this, so let's, let's do it. <laughs> any more questions or design concerns? Okay. Um, I then it sounds like you guys have the information you need. So what we'll do is we will um, hear the next case. And then uh, once we've heard that case, then we'll start our deliberations where uh, you'd be deliberating in both cases this evening. So you guys ready to proceed? Okay, great. Okay. So Reza, I'll have you turn your mic off and your video off and I'll have the, the next applicant in their turn team turn on their mics and their um, videos. So this next application is our second case of the evening. The file number is SP 22 It's a major site plan review. The address is 14 Railroad Street. This is located in the PMV Public Market Village District. Uh, the request is to construct a three-story, 46,856 square foot self-service storage facility with 451 storage units and six parking spaces. There's an existing self-storage building that would remain. Um, there is a moving truck rental component of the operations uh, to be eliminated. Um, just a little bit of background and history. Uh, this originally came to you um, as it is a major site plan review and it needs a recommendation to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the, the, the variances it's seeking from the Zoning Board of Appeals is an area variance to expand a non-conforming use in the district as well as some uh, transparency requirements. You guys, um, had some concerns which were enumerated in your recommendation. Since then, the applicant has been working to address said design to the, your concerns, and that is why they are here before you this evening to present their revised drawings. And so I will give it over to the applicant and their team to kind of um, fit, uh, to catch everyone up to speed on what you've been working on. I think I'm off of the mute. Hello? Hi, everybody. This is Betsy Brugg. Um, we have our whole team on. Um, hopefully they're on here. Uh, Randy Sickler should be on, our architect. I think Glenn Harvey should be on, um, our project engineer. Uh, Sabrina Pernolet from StoreSpace should be on. And we may have a few others. Let's see. I think they're on. Okay. So yeah. So we appreciate the opportunity to come back uh, and meet with the PRC again. Um, we did get your comments, recommendation. We started working on some revisions to address those comments. There are some challenges with the site and grading and things that we ran across. Um, so we worked informally. Uh, met with. Um, um, Roseanne and uh, Anna uh, to talk about those things and tried to work through them. And we've given you um, kind of a revised plan, hopefully that I, I think has achieved some of the goals um, and uh, addressed some of the issues that, that we came up against uh, in um, kind of coming up with the best possible plan. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Randy and let him kind of walk you through the design. He, I think he's on. Andy, I can either share my screen or I can give you permission to share, share yours, whatever your personal preference is. 
Um, you could share yours, Anna. Okay. Let me know which drawings you want me to pull up. Um, I guess we would start with the floor plan. Okay. Uh, first floor plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the issues that was brought up before with regard to transparency and uh, pedestrian activity along the street front was the use of the building itself and a desire to have some type of a leasable retail space in the front of this. Originally, a narrower space had been proposed. We've deepened this, so it is about a 1,200 square foot leasable area now that takes up uh, approximately half of the frontage along the street, has a separate entrance from the business office for store space, which will be relocating from um, the south side of the existing building to the southeast corner of the of the addition um, to achieve access to the doors because the site slopes approximately six feet downward from east to west or uh, right to left on the on the plan we're looking at uh, we had to have an elevated walkway in order to um, make the grades work out with finished floor and in order to do that, we reduced the building footprint by five feet in the north-south direction uh, to pull that back uh, away from the right-of-way line, um, which that walkway would have encroached upon had we not done that. So we basically have actually made the building smaller. Um, it used to be approximately 125 feet square. Now it is 125 by 120. So there's been a reduction in leasable area for the owner on three floors uh, out of their storage space. Um, but we actually made the leasable area along Railroad Street a little larger than last time we looked at this. Um, as I said, it has its own um, entrance. It would be separate from the, uh, the rest of the building. They would not be connected internally. So, um, we have not indicated, a, for example, a toilet room for that space because we don't know what the tenant layout would desired would be at this point, but that would have to most likely be added to it. Um, we tried to maximize the glass frontage along Railroad Street. Um, that wraps around the corner at the leasing office for store space. And there's additionally some uh, real windows at the third floor level um, that you can see on the elevation. So I guess we could maybe look at the elevation. So the bottom image there is the, the south elevation is the railroad street. And that shows the elevated walkway that would uh, access both of the um, office or retail entrances. We have steps at the west end to bring you back to a walk that would then connect with the existing sidewalk along railroad street. Uh, the other thing that we did was um, pulled the um, exit stair tower on the left side. There had been an exterior stair coming off of the, um, the landing that is at the main first finished floor level. Um, we realized that we could uh, internally in that stair tower run down another half a flight and exit out directly and avoid the whole um, concrete landing and steps and all that and kind of improve the look along there. So the primary materials are uh, decorative block, um, EFIS, metal canopies, uh, clear glazing. This is south facing. Um, that is the, yeah, what you're showing on the left there is actually the east building, which is the unloading area for clients and uh, more storefront windows for the office. Uh, so one of the challenges with this is the requirement for having glass between two feet and eight feet above the above grade here because the grade slopes off. The average grade here ends up being about two feet below the finished floor. So what we've done for glazing is run the glazing from finished floor up to 
um, eight feet above finished floor along that whole facade. So it's full height glass uh, from the finished floor up. Um, I'm not sure what else I can answer about this beyond that. Or maybe I should, I, maybe I should say I'll invite questions because I, I think I've uh, kind of stated what we're looking at. Can I ask Randy just to round out the drawings? Is there a site plan we could look at? Because the floor plan didn't include the relationship to the right of way. And is there any landscaping in the front there and where that's elevated or past the elevation where we, we see start to see some of the basement wall? Yep, I think Anna is bringing up the site drawings now. Um, and I think Glenn and Paul from Bergman are on. Uh, might be able to speak to landscaping. Sure, this is Glenn from Bergman. If you go to sheet C-130, that's the landscape plan. So that'll show the um, the footprint of the building in plan view with the proposed landscaping. So we are uh, proposing landscaping along the um, east elevation and then across the frontage of the building, as you can see there. Can you zoom in, Anna? I mean, towards the front. I'm just having a hard time reading. There we go. That's much better. How wide is the existing sidewalk? Paul, can you comment on that? Do you have that dimension down yeah, there? Sorry about section? that. I, I, I was on mute. Um, yeah, the existing sidewalk is approximately 10 feet wide. It does vary you know, very slightly within an inch or two along there just because of how it was yeah. constructed. But that's pretty good. <clears throat> and then the heck of it, did you, have you talked to the city at all about providing, if it's that wide, of providing any uh, tree pits along that area to uh, ha ha have a street tree situation in the front as opposed to uh, what you've got is is fine. I always love it when you're able to pull these trees or have some trees out further. Um, anyway, I just, and what kind I, of trees? I, what kind of trees are those? So leave that plan right there. So the SRs, that's an yeah. ivory silk uh, lilac. How tall do they grow? Uh, mature height. 20 to 25 feet. Mm -hmm. And that won't interfere on the corner with the canopy? Just. Uh, it shouldn't. I think that, I mean, that's over a. Okay. It'll take years for that to get to that height and they, they'll be maintained so that they don't interfere. And it looks on this plan like the uh, sidewalk that's directly in front of the building for the new entrances also continues past them. Um, is that the case or is it stopping past that second door? Past that second door, it will come back out. There's a, it comes back out and connects to the sidewalk along railroad street. Okay. So my only question there is when I look at those two doors opening up, I mean, I, I this, this, I just wonder if that's, um, if that's a hazard <laughs> with the tree. Or no, no, if with the five foot, with the, with the sidewalk and someone's walking along the sidewalk and the door opens up and hits them in the face. But your sidewalk, the elevated sidewalk. Right, the right. Entrance. So it's just a question there of whether someone's going to get hit in the face. But. Um, what about putting a sidewalk that connected that two door area to the main sidewalk out Front. I think there's great issues with that, right, Paul? That Is that, that right? Okay. Yeah, that's why. So you, as you can see, we, as you move to the left across the front of that building, um, there, like, so in the bottom corner, so you can see that we've got steps you have to come down to get back mm -hmm. to the existing grade to tie into the sidewalk along Railroad Street. Will there be an accessible entrance somewhere? 
so th this is designed in such a way that um, if someone is coming down the sidewalk from Railroad Street, then they can go down the proposed ADA ramp and get to the doors in the front. Or if they park at the ADA parking space uh, farther on the north of the page, it's then an accessible route to get to the doors in the front. And when you say the front, it's these doors that we're looking at here? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I, okay. the only thing, I mean, this is not really a PRC comment, but just since we're talking about it, I would just make sure we check the code requirements for an accessible route as far as the door swinging out over it. So based on the review of the ADA code that was conducted while doing the site plan, uh, the spacing minimum requirement is 60 inches, which this provides. Okay. Just one comment. Um, for the potential to put tree pits in here, I believe there is a overhead RG line through here. Uh, so I'm not sure we want to put trees underneath the uh, utility lines there. I think you're right, Holly. I think there is a line there. You could go to street view and you'll sort of see what. <clears throat> so it might not quite work there. Is Which there is a... Is there a species that might work in that kind of a setting? I, I, I don't really know. Um, I just don't think that it's desirable. That's something we, we could have our uh, landscape architect look at and make sure that we've got the appropriate tree selection that provides the um, height re restrictions just to make sure we're not getting into those lines. Yeah, I mean, you know, for the plantings you have up towards the building, I would assume you're fine. It's more if we were to put in uh, tree pits in the city right of way. Right. Um, you know, we have a lot going on on the streets through there, too. So. Although, as I look at this, it, I think two of those trees, maybe three, are still in your right of way. They're just not out by the sidewalk. That's correct. There are, as you yeah. on the, I guess, be the east side, those two to the right. Yeah, I guess my, my comment is just be aware of the overhead mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, we'll make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and Glenn, based on the survey that we did, the overhead line runs almost at the edge of the sidewalk. If you look on the I south guess, end of yeah. the page, there's, yeah, the, the, the poles are at the very edge of where the sidewalk meets the road. So um, we had assumed that the trees would be, you know, trimmed in such a way over the years that they wouldn't interfere with the lines. Correct. Does moving the building back slightly from the right of way impact the zoning code setback requirements at all? No, it does not. Not for the PMV. Unless there's any other thoughts about what we're, what we're I, I, I wasn't at this meeting and I saw that, um, I guess, uh, I was just curious as to what were some of the major comments about the building itself? What, what uh, was that yeah. one of the main issues for denial? Let me go to that document so I can speak intelligently. The thing that I think the thing that pops to my head was the suitability of the use, given the nature of Railroad Street, um, having an active retail component on that frontage, um, okay. given that it is a non-conforming use to the district. But let me, you asked about the building itself, so let me run to the PRC recommendation. And anyone else that was there can fill me in while I do that. Yeah, Jim Yarrington, I guess, was one of the uh, participants here. It's um, my understanding, Roger, um, because I, I have read the letter and I was in the follow-up meeting um, that the proposed leased space on the front is meant as mitigation so that the use that is actually fronting Railroad Street is more of the intended active commercial use. Uh, likewise, putting the leasing office on the corner, so that's also... Uh, an active commercial use. Sure. Um, and the setting back of the building to allow the accessible sidewalk uh, had to do with um, putting getting doors on the front there. 
um, to make that space uh, viable and accessible. And certainly, um, I'm trying to remember what else was in Was there the, any issues with the transparency? EFIS? Oh yeah, the transparency. And, and so and oh, I won't and forget the thing about the EFIS, but the transparency, um, and would still require uh, consideration, but the thought there was that um, with the increased transparency all along the front, um, the fact that it doesn't exactly align with the slope of the grade, but it does align with the footprint and the use of the building, that that, that would probably be uh, potentially acceptable. And the major transparency issue being that the windows can't be blocked by like permanent um, like features behind them. So I think that the applicant was initially proposing like faux garage doors to kind of emulate the self-storage theme. And there was concern about that not meeting the zoning code, um, given that it's kind of like the windows aren't really opening in, in towards anything. I believe the upper windows are new as well. Okay. And the building materials? No comment. Uh, there wasn't any mention on the building materials. Okay. What is the ceiling height of the first floor? Um, I believe the floor to floor height is 12 feet. So the ceiling heights in there would probably be nine feet approximately. So right now you've got the head of the windows, the top of the windows along Railroad Street are uh, seven feet up. Uh, eight feet above finished floor. Oh, I was looking at the door. That, so are they eight foot doors? Yes, they were. Oh, okay. Just to avoid a, a small transom, Roger. Sure. No, that's fine. I was just was wondering if there was, in fact, a way to increase that even further. But uh, okay, eight foot up. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I tried to lower it down to the finished floor try to deal with the, the fact that the finished floor is above, considerably above grade at the West End. In the, designing this, what sort of discussions did you guys have at SWBR relative to the, the EFIS material on the outside? Oh, versus cement board panels or, you know, or other choices? Well, this is a, a national company that has material standards for their new facilities. And we're trying to keep uh, somewhat in keeping with what they use typically in their facilities around the country. So they've designed buildings similar to this around the country. Well, I can, uh, several of the clients representatives are on the, on this call. Maybe uh, Sabrina could speak to that better than I because she's probably done a couple of hundred of these. That would be really nice to be able to, in a way, if there's some similarities here, to be able to see what those other structures um, actually look like at the end of the day. Um, give us a better idea. Good afternoon. Uh, absolutely. I'll be more than happy to share uh, images of the other properties and the finishes that we have implemented across the country. Uh, would you like me to share my screen or would you like me to just send an email with the pictures and addresses of those properties? You can share your screen. Okay. One moment. Okay. So I would like to show you, uh, we have a couple of properties located in Philadelphia in where we did a renovation on the existing building. We currently, on, on that building, we show, uh, we, we show EFIS as exterior finish. Give me one second.
Okay, are you able to see my screen right now? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is one of the properties that we have located in Philadelphia. Uh, the building went through a very important renovation. This is how the building used to look before on the exterior. Um, it was in pretty rough shape. And then uh, with the renovation process that we typically get our buildings to, to try to beautify and at the same time blend with existing municipalities, we got it to be what you can see over here on this section. Uh, that's one of the properties that we have now. We typically have a standard, a very standardized palette that we have used in Cincinnati, that we have used, um, well, in Ohio, I'm sorry, that we have used in other states. And it all refers to colors from Sherwin Williams. And then of course our typical signage with, with, with little uh, marks of red here and there, just to accentuate the, the, the structure itself. And that is um, all this material up above the, the first yes, floor? Yes, sir. Okay. That is correct, yes. Sabrina, can you, can you enlarge that image so we could see it closer, please? Yes. Thank you. My apologies. I'm just in our web page just to make sure that um, we have the latest and greatest because we are doing these renovations all over the country. So I just want to make sure that we have, let me see. I think I can enlarge this image right now, but I can give you a library of pictures. I can prepare that for you after this call. I can send you the library of pictures. Um, let me see that for you real quick. I do think, Sabrina, do. that the goal of tonight is to get a new vote um, that supports okay. the project for the zoning board. So I, I just, you know, don't want you to create a delay when you didn't intend to. <laughs> Absolutely no, you're absolutely right. We we definitely um let me let me work in that right now. Um let me get you those images on high quality. Okay. Well, you know, when working with EFIS, one of the, I think, uh, important pieces of the design of, a, of an EFIS facade is, is the, joint, the jointing. Um, and I noticed that on, on your Price Street, Philadelphia, that you do have a certain amount of joining work that you've done there. And, um, I don't know, the more sensitive you are to that aspect makes the ephus uh, come off a lot better than if it was just a big plain, uh, you know, facade there. Um, and I see that on the elevation of your building you're proposing here, it's a multicolored ephus, um, which will give it some you know, some help to that effect. So it's intended to be relief to that as well, Roger. Um, the piers, uh, the lighter colored piers in the elevation are a couple of inches forward of the of the windows and the ephus, the darker gray plane be behind it. Oh, that's, that's projecting a little bit out, did you? Yes. Okay. So there'll be some shadow as well there. Right, 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 right. Okay, I see. That's good to know. So my it, my apologies. This is getting out of. This is taking a little bit longer because my system isn't working properly. This is one of the pictures that we have for the church pictures that we have for the property. Um, this is mostly one uh, the one of the ephes finishes that we currently have. But if the question is mostly related to what other materials can we implement? Hello? Well, yeah, I'm here. My apologies, sir. My system today is, is not working very good, but I'm trying to get you the information. Uh, if that question goes mostly to if, you know, how can we give dimension to the property? How can we work on the colors and the finishes to make it look appealing to the pedestrians and the view? We can definitely work on it. Um, Anna, can you pull up the elevation again while she's talking? 
Sure, I would just need Sabrina to stop sharing. Oh, sorry, Sabrina. There we go. No problem. One moment. Mm -hmm. Give me the next one. Yep. There you go. Yeah. And so those colors in the key in the upper right, those are actual colors? Yes. Okay. Those are the typical colors that we use. We go by Sherwin-Williams, Sherwin nebulous white, monorail silver. And then uh, the red color is it going to be determined by the signage or the market and windows that we have. Okay. And the masonry is going to be the split place block. Correct. Can you zoom out again, Anna? Please. Did discussion color come up in the last, on, on color come up at the last meeting? No. Okay, all right, I'm not gonna get into that. Okay, <laughs> I do, uh, Randy, I do have a question that on the uh, south elevation, the upper windows, is there a yes. reason that they're wider than the, the lower windows? It just feels a bit awkward. Um, that is a kind of a display gallery type space. Um, mm -hmm we could narrow them a little bit or bring it back to the joint line or well it looks like one is going into the pier <laughs> or, yeah know. well the it, it's not visual pier yeah structural pier no okay uh, but we could pull that back to that to the you know pull it to the left to match the line below very easily i think that, that would I help that at, uh, that corner piece read is one unified piece yep and i now that i look at that i agree with you Okay. Uh, on the south elevation, on the um, the far left side of the building, um, I I wonder if you just added a little bit of height in that brick or that block portion, like you did on the east elevation. Just kick it up uh, a tad above the roof line. There it might sort of help the. Yeah, um, and actually, it was Roger. Um, it what one of the comments we got was that there were too many breaks in the coping and the elevation line. Oh, really? Okay. Hold that down to match it, but I, I actually tend to agree with you. I think it should be higher. Yeah, just a bit, just like you've got, you know, on the on the east side. I think it would help a little bit. Yeah, and, and functionally, it's a it's an exit stair tower. It has a different purpose than what's sure. It. So expressing it differently does make sense. Oh no, we're getting into a form and function conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. All right, watch out, when you watch turn out. Architects, too many yes. architects, too many architects in the room. Uh, yeah, and along those lines, I wonder if we can kind of zoom out a little bit here to the sort of the fundamental issues that were in the, in the letter that are more about the use of this and whether or not it's actually adding vibrancy um, to Railroad Street. I'm not convinced that it is. Um, but I, I mean, I do appreciate that you know, there was an attempt to to add a, a leasable commercial space to this. I just want to talk about that a little bit. You know, as long as we're talking about you know store spaces um, locations throughout the country, Sabrina or others, um, what experience does the company have with leasing commercial space that has nothing to do with their primary product or service? Well, our, our experience has been actually very positive. Um, prior to us getting involved into any type of development, we just want to make sure that at the end of the day, the market is going to be, or the trade is going to be feasible. For instance, I can speak for one of the properties that we have here in Orlando located in Millennia. And that property on the adjoining locations, all you have is malls and so on and so forth. You have a lot of residentials and malls. And according to our, you know, the study presented during the due diligence phase uh, prior to getting involved with the development, actually it was shown that a huge demand was offered. With that being said, typically for a store space, even though the uh, location or the location doesn't have any other storage facilities, those are specifically the targets that the company has because that means that there is a demand, but the offer is low for it. Yeah, I mean, Orlando is extremely different market than Rochester. Also, it's very suburban. This is a. Do you have any experience with a, with an urban market, 
an urban setting leasing out commercial space like this? Yes, well, we also have a property located in 48 King Street in Rochester. And the experience, the lease experience has been very positive on the market, the area as well. 48 King, you said? And, excuse me? You said 48 King Street? Yes, that is correct. 48 King Street, located in Rochester. And the, as matter, what is the business in there? The business in that there is uh, residential mostly. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm thinking more about this uh, a similar kind of setting to what we're what you're proposing here. If you have similar experience, I, and I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, again, I appreciate the the inclusion of that. I just wonder, you know, is it actually likely to be filled with something? And oftentimes we think of that as purely market driven. Um, but in reality, it's not entirely market driven. Sometimes there are, are developers that we've seen here in other cities that um, include a commercial first floor commercial space because the city requires it. But it's not really in their portfolio or in their experience to fill a space like that. And they manage to get the project to pencil out without even filling that space. Um, and it just kind of sits vacant and, and doesn't add any vibrancy. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. I just want to make sure that we're thorough and, and, that we're, and, and that we're likely to see something actually go in the space. Oh, and that absolutely. was the primary concern at the last meeting. That was yes. what we, that was the committee as a whole. You know, there wasn't a lot of discussion about um, the building itself because we we're more concerned with the use of that space and how it relates to what's going on in Railroad Street. Oh, absolutely. And um, I just wanted to make sure again that I'm, I'm understanding the right, the right question. So um, part of the reason why the whole process of getting uh, the variance, it was because we are adding or we're having an addition to the existing property. The existing property has a very high percentage of list up. And that is the reason why after doing the market research, and the cost benefits analysis of starting a project here is because if we forecast to have, you know, we already have 99% of occupancy according to my last records of last month. With that being said, once we reach out the 100% occupancy, it's going to be, you know, where do we get more space? So we typically involve, get involved in this type of developments once we understand that, yes, it's going to have a rentability and affordability, although, Right now, everything is centered on the district market village. We extrapolate all the study, uh, study to a 20 mile radius. And based on those necessities is that we proceed to do, you know, the, the let's say to continue the due diligence to pursue the development itself. So if it's necessary any type of, let's say of backup information with any type of, or the existing occupancy that we have on the, on the existing building, we can provide that as well. But mainly the reason why we're having that is because even if we have just drug rentals or just have any type of accessory units to supply the demand that we have for storage, it wouldn't be enough. Um, I don't know if this is for Sabrina or Randy, but perhaps you could talk about the, the way you chose the size and the shape of the lease space and why, what you think it's suitable for. Um, just as just just as a way of, of showing that it's um, something that's going to be able to be marketed, could we talk a little bit about that? Well, I'll, I'll talk quickly um, just about the size of it. Uh, we increased the frontage along the uh, railroad street elevation um, by reconfiguring the lease office. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan, I'm just going to interrupt you for a minute. And I think we'd be better off with the plan up for this part with the with like zoomed into the lease space. The uh, floor plan with the lease space. Thanks. Yeah, that's the one. And last time this was presented, it was it was half the depth into the building. So they have eliminated or, or given up about uh, 600 square feet of uh, storage unit space on this floor in order to double the, the more than double the space. I think what we had before was 600 square feet or less. 
a lot of the face. So this is now a 1200 square foot space, 20 feet deep, 60 feet long, um, a small business uh, retail operation or something like that could certainly fit in here. Um, I don't believe they're looking to put a restaurant use in here. Um, we had not planned to run kitchen hoods up through the other two floors and that sort of thing to support that type of a use. But certainly um, some type of a retail function or an office function would fit in here. So this is Betsy. I'm going to chime in because I, I think that, you know, we're all kind of sitting in different locations. So we had discussed, um, you know, originally that, you know, we wanted to create an active street front. Um, so we needed to have some kind of retail. We certainly are not in a position to commit, but we had talked about the fact that um, this property owner has in the past and has the ability to have their own kind of retail related to the self-storage where they serve the needs of, you know, city residents by selling um, packing supplies, boxes, those types of things that people use when they move. Um, so I think that was kind of the first starting point. Um, but they also are getting familiar with the neighborhood. And I think they also are not opposed to leasing the space out, but strictly for some type of a, you know, store type of a use. We have not talked, and I don't think there's any interest in doing anything of the scale of a restaurant, nor would we be required to under the zoning here. I think we're looking at just creating kind of a neighborhood friendly type of a, a use that would, um, you know, create that kind of street experience that you're looking for. Um, but they're, um, you know, it wasn't designed for something like a restaurant. Anna, or, or maybe Roseanne, can you remind us what the allowable uses are in this district? Um, I can pull up that list. You know, I think we're thinking of a, an actual storefront, you know, like a, a retail store. Yeah, and, and that was kind of what I was trying to get at earlier is, is and I'm still not really clear if store space has experience getting a retail store in a, in a situation that's very similar to this in an urban environment. I believe they have done it before. If I may speak to that, this is Vince Tengis. I'm the general counsel for store space. <clears throat> the answer is yes, we have had experience with retail. Um, and yes, we've had it in an urban setting. Sometimes it is successful, uh, but it's largely market driven as to the needs of, um, of the immediate neighborhood. Uh, it, it, is, it is hard to predict what sort of retail tenant would use this, but I agree, restaurant is not a probably a viable alternative, but it is again, it, it's hard to speculate on what uses there are. And we've had degrees of success in leasing. Um, and it's again, largely neighborhood dependent and driven. So we're in the, clear, I, the retail I use is a permitted use in the, in the district. Just so we're all on the same page though, and for my own clarity, one of the reasons that this project is going through site plan review, aside from the fact that it's a new building, is it true that the proposed use of self-storage is not one of the permitted uses? Yeah, this is technically an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use. It's a new building though, right? It's an expansion um, of the building. It's, it's an addition. It's connected okay. to the existing building. There is an existing self-storage building. It is just being extended. To answer your question, Matt, self-storage is not a permitted use in the PMV. Okay. Okay, so are there more questions or should we move on to deliberations? Okay, so I'm gonna say that means there's no more questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, you can go. Um, uh, Betsy or anyone, is there any last things you wanna say before we, we 
just pretty much silence everybody except the PRC committee? Um, you know, I guess I would only add that, you know, we are, um, you know, we're not here because of the use, but we, we will need to go to the zoning board for an expansion of the pre-existing non-conforming use. And what we've tried to do here is, you know, we've tried to listen to the comments that we've gotten and tried to sort of reconcile how we expand a pre-existing non-conforming use and still achieve those kinds of design um, considerations and, and kind of those, those features that you're looking for. Um, so this has been a work in progress and I, I hope that we've accomplished that. Um, we have tried to create that retail. We have, you know, dealt with the, the grade issue. Um, I'm not sure if I've heard any comments that we, are there any comments that you feel that we haven't addressed, I guess would be my question. Because um, I think we've tried to, we've tried to really, you know, attack and, you know, address each and every one of the comments that, that were main, made by the PRC. The main comments made by the PRC was having a first floor active use and transparency. And I think we've improved both of those. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else, you know, I guess we'll wait and see our, see what the comments are. Thank you. Yeah. I think we just worked really hard to try to make this really the best possible fit. Um, and again, we're not here for the youth specifically, and we're trying to kind of reconcile everything and still meet the considerations. Well, the youth um, is the, part of the, the use is part of the proposal to the zoning board. So I'm kind of confused Correct. by that language because the use is one of the variances you're seeking. Yes. And I guess, right. The use itself, um, right. The use itself, we are going to the zoning board for that. The PRC, our focus has been on design and how to make this design. Um, you know, we want to address the concerns and the, in the, um, the, the comments the PR that the the, the PRC, the PRC recommendation, has made regarding that. So PRC recommendation. Which is why we've added the, the commercial space. And I, I hope that commercial space satisfies, you know, the, the concerns that they had. Um, you know, we think it works. If, you know, I haven't heard, uh, you know, I, I guess I just want to make sure that we've really, you know, that we're all on the same page because we're trying to work with the PRC to really achieve the best possible project. So in regards to major site plan reviews, PRC recommendations are in response to the things in need of waivers, such of which includes the expansion of a non-conforming use. So PRC review and recommendation would include that area variance to expand a non-conforming use. Okay, I, I appreciate that. I just wanna make sure that the PRC understands we're trying to work with you to address all your concerns and I'm hoping that we have addressed them. I just couldn't, wasn't clear from the comments and the questions whether whether everybody feels that we've we've reached that point. I hope we have. I feel like it's very difficult the communication in the Zoom format because I can't it see is, everybody's and, face. And so I, I just don't know if we've answered everybody's if, yeah. questions. Yeah. If I could prompt everybody else again, I mean, when we go into deliberations, uh, the applicant isn't going to get a chance to talk. And what I would really like to avoid is the the questions that haven't been asked that you then don't have an answer for. <laughs> so if there are any additional questions, it would be great to take the opportunity to ask it of the applicant. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what the protocol is here. The difference between this conversation versus the del deliberations, uh, I don't have any additional questions, but that shouldn't be interpreted as that uh, I'm necessarily on the same page with what's being proposed here. Okay, but um, this is a chance to dialogue. I think I agree with Betsy you that you've definitely made an effort. Um, I agree with that, it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I think it's what's being proposed is, proposed is what's appropriate for Railroad Street. Okay, and I guess my question is: is your is it the um, is your issue with the 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 way the retail space is done? Is it with the self storage use? It's I mean, what exactly are what exactly haven't we? But I think that would be a part of the deliberations. Yeah. Um, so we've heard and, and looked at what you presented today. So we will convene, discuss mm -hmm. what we've seen today and sort of come up with what we think might be the best, best path forward here. Um, it might be that we ask for additional changes. It may be that we're not comfortable with the use. Um, but I think we just need to have that conversation first. And we would certainly let you know where we land with that. 
Okay. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, I have to say, I don't like these Zoom formats. I feel like it's very hard to Nobody does, Betsy. Nobody yeah. does. If it, if it makes you feel any better, though, even when we were meeting in a room, once we, the presentation was done, we would ask the presenters to leave and then go through our deliberations. So really, the process hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, you know, everyone wants to know all the answers um, as we do the presentation. But, you know, we yeah. want to do due diligence and make sure we're having a thorough conversation on it, certainly. One of the, let me jump in. <laughs> you know, this hey, is really interesting. The previous um, case we had was a gas station, and 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 but but it was a gas station that employed a huge amount of rich brick material, making it you know a heck of a lot better than if it was your typical gas station facade. And I look at this building, and 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 I and I can see in an area that has a lot of lively uh, facades and treatments, I'm, I'm a little worried that this building is just going to be uh, a large be behemoth of a structure. And if it, it had, if it was clad in richer materials like a lot of warehousey kinds of buildings that are around town here. Um, it would um, be a, a, a better fit in this uh, environment. I'm sort of concerned about the the, the huge amount of EFIS, and I know that that SWBR has tried like heck to make it uh, as interesting as possible. Um, I probably, if, if I was at the first meeting, would have talked a lot more about the use of brick as a material uh, to help, you know, with uh, uh, the EFIS situation. So I'm not sure exactly, but because that wasn't really brought up on the rest of the committee at that time, and including Jim Yarrington, who was the architect there the last time you met, um, it sounds like you didn't have any comments relative to the materials. Uh, so that's, you know, that's my only concern. I think the use is probably something that's really needed in, in the area. <laughs> um, but it's just, and, and I, it's nice that you're going to, you know, put the extra transparency on the lower level on the first floor. That's great. Um, I guess I'm a little concerned about, I got to shut this off, folks, because I can't get rid of it. Anyway, that, that's my comment. I appreciate that. Thanks, Roger. Okay, with that, uh, we can proceed into deliberations. Are you guys okay with just powering straight through or do you need a minute? By you guys, I mean the PRC. Committee members. Okay, powering through. Thumbs up to power through. Uh, so with that, I'll ask the design team to turn off their videos and to mute themselves. Um, as Roseanne mentioned, there is no participation by the applicants. So this is a closed meeting. You can you can be flies on the wall. You can listen in, but there won't be any. Uh, we won't be able to accept any additional statements. This is purely a deliberations amongst uh, committee members. Um, we are going to hear the very first case that was presented to us this evening. So that is uh, the proposed gas station and convenience store at 362 West Main Street. So I'll open it up for discussion. Thoughts? Well, okay I mean, we that. had a long discussion <laughs> about, the, about the canopy. I would, I would absolutely like to see something, um, you know, Doc documented about um, you know something to do with uh, the coloring and um, you know some way of tying the canopy in better to the building. I think the building is very nice. I think if they can successfully uh, construct the building and maintain um, the the you know good level of transparency that it has, um, the building is going to be an asset but the canopy is gonna be a, a detriment, so. 
I'd like to see something. Not that I don't agree, Dana. Uh, I just want to clarify, though, Anna, is there anything in the zoning code regarding color as it pertains to uh, a limit, limitation on number of colors used? So we okay. is it's not specifying. It does not like say what colors you can and cannot use, just how many colors you can use. So if you're using a couple colors of brick and then more colors in the canopy, is that too many? It's too many colors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we'd be, I wouldn't be comfortable saying it's too many colors. Just just two color of brick and two colors in addition. I don't I don't think I'd be comfortable saying that's too many because many times we don't even count the brick as a color because it's a sure. natural material. Yeah, so. so I think I just I think we can definitely make recommendations, but I don't necessarily think we have a say in what color the company's colors are. So just to clarify a bit, um, uh, and I'll I'll take some notes, um, but um, comments are one thing, but what's very important are things that you feel strongly enough about to make a condition because we're looking for approved, approved on condition or denied. So recommend recommendation. Sorry. Recommended approval, recommended denial. If you're recommending denial, proposing some kind of mitigating measure. So that would be the condition Roseanne speaks of. Uh, I Really? Because oh. I thought I just, I'll, I'll double check. Because I thought I was just in the code. Or, or recommended on condition. We could do that. Yeah. But it would be, yeah. Apologies. Would... Anna and I are doing this for the first time. <laughs> well, I, yes, and you're doing very well. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. The building is good. And it's the canopy that's the issue. And if the canopy could be uh, maybe, and it is, part of it is the colors. And part of it is the, uh, the column supports. Um, if, if it can be more harmonious with the building, that's what I would like to see. Okay. Yeah, I think I would motion that I recommend approval on condition that they look into what else they could do on the canopy to kind of architecturally make it work with the overall project. And are you, would you all be satisfied with that uh, approval on condition being... Um, to be determined by the manager zoning or you're comfortable with the staff making the final decision or do you need it to come So back? it'll end up being approved by the manager zoning because this one's this one's going would be going straight to site plan approval and it would be taking these recommendations so it'll be the manager of zoning's opinion but factoring in this <coughs> RC recommendation so it, it, you will the manager of zoning will end up being the deciding body the deciding factor so, but is everyone on board with PRC not looking at it again, based on what oh. they propose? I am. Yeah, I'm okay. So. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay that's okay. That. Okay. Yes. okay. I just. I, th I think the challenge is that you know the the teal, yellow, and white is their, you know, that's their logo. That's their trademark. They obviously want those colors on there. Um, but you know, I know that if we weren't talking about West Main Street in the city of Rochester, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. I mean, they would not be able to put this canopy up in in many other parts of the community. And, you know, I realize they want to save money by not changing it at all. But, you know, I would even be okay if the canopy itself was a different color and it even had, you know, like their, their sign in their trademark colors. It's just that having the whole thing in the colors, you know, just doesn't makes sense mm -hmm. with, with this really nice building. Oh. And when you say the canopy in a different color, you're talking about a color that is that it, that connects it back to the building, the light Correct. brick or the dark brick, or perhaps the right. color of the storefront right. framing. Okay. Similar to what we saw on the on the fast track, right? Okay. And then their their logo colors can be in their signage on the canopy. I would be fine with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Great. What other? So it sounds like nobody's talking about denial. So can we just Correct. put that off the table? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we're talking approved with conditions. So we have a condition around the canopy. What other, if any, conditions? 
Um, did did somebody not, want a structural not, report on that retaining wall or? So the retaining wall, um, at least looking at the survey that I saw, the retaining wall is half on their property and half in the city right of way. And the end that seems to be having the impact issues is in the city right of way. Um, so at the very least, I think we need to note that um, I do think it's good to have a structural evaluation of the wall as a whole um, and definitely documentation of the condition that it's in prior to construction. So if there's any construction related activities, um, you know, especially that may cause vibration and additional cracks and damage to the wall that that's documented. Um, and I think perhaps some coordination with the city on what to do with the end of that wall, including um, perhaps better placement of signage and or bollards um, to protect the wall and also the persons that are driving in that area. Holly, just to clarify, um, do you want just documentation of condition or do you actually also want a, a structural report? I think we should request a structural report from the structural engineers that, um, that's doing the design of the project. Okay. I think it'll be in their best interest to have it as well. Okay, so structural report and documentation of condition. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that part of this PRC or is that part of site plan review? Site I mean, plan it could probably go either way. Mm -hmm. Site plan review. I think if it's a recommendation that's part of the approval, then it strengthens it being included in site plan review. Okay, so we'll do both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. But you can you can word the condition as a as a recommendation that as part of site plan review there'll be a structural report and conditions uh, do documentation of conditions of the wall and coordination with the city on the uh, part that's in the right of way. Okay. Yeah, and maybe that's for site plan too. They, I know he was talking about putting a trench drain along there. Uh, so there'll be some work done behind the wall. So depending on what they determine early on, they may wanna do an evaluation during construction as well. When they dig down there. Mm -hmm. You mean when they start digging up for the trench? Yes, yep. Yeah. So, uh, the kind, you know, they want to, you know, we don't want the contractors just out there digging without thinking about, hey, let's take a look at the back of this wall, see what's going on. <laughs> you know, that happens. Okay. Thank you. Any other conditions? Not on my end. Okay, so how do you guys usually do this? Do we just read back the conditions and then you guys vote? Or how do you usually do it? Uh, yeah, we usually do it based on someone's recommendation. So, does, okay. so yeah, so you could just read it. Makes, let's have somebody motion, make a second, and then I will read the vote record and the condition onto the record. So, so I have, have, a, have motion. a motion. I'll make a motion. Do you have a second? I second. Great. So a motion has been made to recommend approval on condition, condition being that um, a structural evaluation on the retaining wall is provided as per recommend as per via the site plan review process, as well as the canopy be incorporated into like ha uh, explored a harmonious building design. Can you guys kind of pick up my wording a little bit? I would say that they're looking for the canopy design to be modified, to be more sympathetic to the design of the existing building, particularly the color, and that any um, use of color for uh, business identification be limited to the signage. I would and, add the brick around the column. And explore the use of brick around the columns, yeah. but yeah. not in its exact fashion. That was very dizzying. <laughs> um, um, I will go down the list of voting members and you can just say yay or nay. Does that work for you all? Holly Barrett? Yay. Uh, Ro Kevin Kelly? Yay. Dana Miller? Yay. <laughs> Roger Brown? Yay. Matt Vanderwall? Yep. Roseanne Khalil? Yay. 
by a vote of 7-0-0, the motion passes in the affirmative, so recommending approval on condition. Okay. That was a 6 0, zero. All righty, this case is closed. I'm trying to gather up as much city council meetings I can to kind of make this work. <laughs> Uh, our next case is 14 Railroad Street. <clears throat> so just to clarify a little bit, um, they will be going to the zoning board for the area variance. So uh, what was said in the original decision and what is whatever is said tonight in tonight's decision, those will be shared with the zoning board. Um, however, I, if I have one note of caution, it's just that if they are successful, with the zoning board, then, then site plan review cannot deny them the use expansion. So I just wanna make sure that we're all clear on that, that, that just by denying this, we cannot prevent the use from being expanded. Um, however, it will be passed on to the zoning board for, for their consideration and deliberations. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And as far as I know, Anna, the, the, the only, correct me if I'm wrong, the only um, variance they need for design guidelines is the transparency because it follows the floor, the first floor level and not the street slope. Uh, give me true? a minute. I'm not yeah. sure. One moment. Aren't there transparency requirements yeah. for upper yeah. floors? No, I don't think so. Really? Oh. I thought there were, okay. You're thinking of percentage of the facade? Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. I'll, I'll pull up PV, but I don't think I, let me check before I say that. Oh, I'm Anna's looking at, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at a code review. I'm seeing no blank walls over 25 feet. Um. Did they, they corrected the EFIS lower than four feet. This might be an old code review. The transparency, which we discussed at length. Yeah, it's the transparency required from the expansion of the non-conforming use. It's what they're going to the zoning board for. Yeah, Roger, uh, it's windows and transparency, all new construction on building facades that are within 60 feet of a street right of way or a vehicle or pedestrian way internal to the Rochester Public Market shall provide areas of transparency equal to 40% of the wall area between the height of two feet and eight feet from the ground. So um, they will need a variance from that, but the that is because they are following the first floor level and not the slope of the sidewalk. So there's nothing in the regulations about the, the blank wall of the upper stories? I don't believe so. I'll, I'll, it does reference back to citywide, so I will go and look at that. Okay. Um, but I don't believe so. I think that would have come up in the review, but I will and double if, check. And if there's not, Roseanne, we should make a note to address that in our zoning code update. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I think we already have, Kevin. We were talking about percentage. <clears throat> I think we already have. All right, great. Um, there's a set of re regulations for the market district, isn't there? Isn't that an urban yes, village? Yes, that's what I was looking at. And I'd be curious as to what the what those uh, restrictions are relative to transparency. Is that what? That's what I just read, though. That's what you just read. That's what I just read. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, all right. Hmm. Well, all right, let's, how do you guys want to start this conversation? So one of the biggest design changes you saw was the, this retail component 
Um, whereas in the initial review, there was a narrow strip of retail and it was a small portion. They've kind of elongated, extended that and, um, create an increased its depth, kind of creating a little bit more of a vanilla box commercial space. Um, what are your general thoughts and reflections? It's definitely better than the original one we reviewed. I, th I think they've done just about all that they can to try and shoehorn a commercial space into this very large storage building. Um, so I appreciate that effort, um, but I think there's just a fundamental issue with uh, whether or not that actually works here. Um, I think that it's, I think we're very likely looking at a vacant store space storefront here. Um, and I definitely have a lot of concerns about that. And, and that's not, again, I don't think that's necessarily uh, an issue with what the developer or the architect has put together. I think they've done what they can. And I don't necessarily think that's entirely a market issue either. I think that it's the limitations of just throwing out a, a 1200 square foot retail space that's in completely enclosed by a, 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 a use that is, um, to say it's inactive is <laughs> an understatement, but as, a, as opposed to, you know, if you were to sort of start from scratch here, which I'm not saying that the developer would, but hypothetically, if you were to have a true mixed use building here uh, that is complementary and, and cohesive with the way that Railroad Street is evolving, the first floor use would be much more likely to succeed and be occupied than as they're trying to shoehorn it into this use. So, so you know, technically, uh, um, as they said, this is just an ex expansion of, of a non-conforming use. Uh, functionally, what we're getting is a massive blank wall on a street that's really starting to gain some momentum. Um, and then a kind of a token retail space because we're pushing them to do that. And I don't think they could do much more than they have. Uh, I think uh, they, they Kevin, have I'm going to push back a bit, um, only because I believe in your mitigation of the first denial, the suggestion was a first floor retail, not a full on mixed use for all three floors. So I'm just going to push back a little bit. Now it seems like we're asking, you're asking for more than you asked for before. Is that it? What was the, what was the recommendation before? Retail along the entire railroad facade. So the, the entire... Oh, was the entire railroad facade, not just the first the floor. Length of railroad. I take that back. <laughs> no, but but point taken, Roseanne. I, I think that's fair. I, I I guess it's just um, it's not a. I guess I'm not seeing this as a black and white thing, and and that's problematic because we're dealing with zoning, and that's a little bit mm -hmm. more. Black yeah, and yeah. White. But, <laughs> but I'm I'm saying that you know what they've done here. I think they're making the best of their limitations and their constraints, and and the product that they are focused on. They're making the best of that. Uh, but I wouldn't call that the highest and best use of what could happen in this site by any stretch. I, it's pretty inconsistent with the Rochester 2034 comprehensive plan. It's pretty inconsistent with the East Main Arts and Market Study. Um, so those things, you know, uh, you know, come into play here. I agree kind of with your point too, Roseanne. Um, and this is obviously my personal opinion, but especially after hearing the zoning code requirement regarding transparency, I personally wouldn't have any issue with all of the upper floors being all storage, especially if they don't have to have windows, but then maybe treating the first floor more like a mixed use building. It does seem a little bit like our major concerns when we first reviewed this was that there was no street frontage, like there was no... Mm -hmm using the wording that Kevin did, there was no active street frontage. <clears throat> so we're like, wait a minute, like what ha would happen if you explored putting something on the first floor that was a commercial space, which would automatically add more transparency and kind of turn this building into something that people are going to use when they're coming to Railroad Street. Um, you know, I, don't think I don't think people have to go upstairs, <laughs> but just having one commercial tenant is definitely kind of 
the minimum to meet that requirement. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's one commercial tenant, but also their commercial piece is also on the facade, which will be occupied. I don't know that that makes the, that helps, but it, but it is. Is that, is that moving from a different first floor space that's then going to be vacant? So if you look at the plan, there was the corner, which is their retail piece. And then the second piece was the lease space. But I, I assume they have an office somewhere in the current building. They did say that in their presentation, they would be relocating their, their office space to that corner on railroad. You know, I actually don't have a, a major problem with the first floor transparency. I guess they have tried to uh, in, you know, improve that situation. I'm, I would, uh, uh, wh what uh, Randy said as far as, uh, I would probably add another horizontal line ab above a seven foot door to create a little more interesting um, uh, first floor transparency, you know, storefront situation. What I have a problem with, and frankly, I think that they could do this is provide glazing on the upper two floors, which would mean that they could not put their storage cubicles along that south wall they'd have to actually create a, a sort of like a corridor with glazing some sort of a window pattern or whatever to help the facade dramatically now <laughs> i do think that's problematic given that that doesn't relate to any code requirement roger well, i mean i don't maybe, disagree uh, aesthetically but i yeah well, we, yeah, and is I that mean, ultimately faux transparency, you know, to transparency into inactivity? Uh, yeah, well, okay, I'm just, that would help. Uh, <laughs> I'm not arguing that it wouldn't help, but I don't know. Right. Um, well, then, the way I see it, then from the first meeting that they have responded reasonably well to the requests of PRC at the first meeting. And if that's the case, then it's hard to deny it. So just to be certain, the um, to me, the big mitigation was that first floor space. Holly, so yeah, I see I that. do have sort of a, I think it's more of a question um, and to build on what uh, Kevin was saying, more of a, you know, sort of a general question on the city's take on putting these storefronts in buildings that aren't naturally intended for retail. So whether it's a parking garage with a little storefront or a storage facility with a little, little storefront or looking at 103 Court Street, a residential facility with a storefront. Um, so I can think of examples of that all over town where that's been put in as a mitigation measure, but to Kevin's point, they remain very vacant. Um, and while I think the intent is really laudable, I'm not sure that the reality of the market supports um, the use of these storefronts. So I question whether that recommendation um, is always, quite frankly, um, the best in our, because um, it creates almost an impression of blight. Mm -hmm. um, so but, it, again, that's a larger question to this specific facility um, and to be consistent with our recommendations for mitigation that we've done for other facilities, it would feel appropriate to approve it here, but it's, something that maybe we should look at? Well, things that you could look at to keep it specific to the site is, um, you know, they've said they're excluding restaurants. Do you not want them to exclude restaurants? Well, um, so the size of the space, do you believe the size of the space is, is a reasonable size? And I'd love um, to speak to that. Um, so as you may know, the city has, I think eight parking garages 
in our inventory right now. And we have a lot of these storefronts. Um, and I have very firsthand knowledge of the challenge because, you know, it's encased in a parking garage. I can't put in stacks and HVAC and all the equipment that restaurants require. Um, I need to meet all these codes for uh, cooking establishments. So suddenly, how do you get to the roof with a stack? Um, do you run it up the front of the building? Um, and so encountering all of these questions and really realizing how incredibly restricted we are, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's definitely a question I think we should revisit because um, we, to be totally honest, are really struggle with all of our garages. And for the most part, we use it as expanded office space. Yeah. And I, yeah. I guess I, I, I think that's a good point, Holly. And I think that that I don't think that speaks to the incompatibility of a restaurant. I think that speaks to the incompatibility of the uses that are above it. In this case, not not the parking garages because we need the parking garages, but the incompatibility of, of storage space above of right. this retail use. Because as as relatively weak as our commercial market is, what is showing up a little bit is restaurants um, as opposed to store, uh, you know, uh, retail stores. So. I understand that it's problematic to try and shoehorn a restaurant into this because of the uses that are above it, but that's not the fault of the restaurant. <laughs> um, that's, that's where the, the market is right now for something, especially on railroad street. This is a, this is a food based district. Yeah. You, I mean, you could, um, I mean, it, it, if you, so I, again, it's not, it's not clear to me if you guys are leaning toward approved with condition or denial. So maybe we should have that general discussion first, but um, but uh, approval on condition could, uh, as a recommendation to the zoning board, uh, that the recommendation be that uh, the infrastructure be provided for the option of restaurant tenants, or for the option of all, you know, the varying, the varying permitted uses within the PV district, which would include restaurants. Roseanne, um, what uh, criteria or merit does the zoning board review the proposal based on? Uh, this is an area variance. So it's gonna be the benefit to the applicant, uh, the benefit to the neighborhood out, wait, wait a minute. The benefit to the applicant does not outweigh, the, and I'm gonna get this wrong. It's like the detriment to the neighborhood versus the benefit to the applicant. <laughs> um, it's going to be substantial. Uh, it's going to be no other remedy. It's going to be self-created. And I believe there's an environmental so those are the standards that are going to be considered. Because, I mean, I guess to not intentionally speak for everyone else, <laughs> but it does seem that there is still some hesitancy to recommend an approval based on the proposed use being not one of the allowable uses in the code mm -hmm. uh, for that neighborhood. Um, but that being said, from a design standpoint, it does seem like there aren't that many design comments overall. I would agree. And I would say if you're going, if you're thinking about denying it based on the use, then you need to be very specific of what they did not meet in your initial recommendations um, to mitigate that use. It? Should we have perhaps made the comment that it wasn't consistent with the 2034 plan? Um, we make... I mean, that's perhaps, I, just, I don't remember. I don't know. Much. I mean, how do we not find ourselves in another situation? You know, I mean, we, we've made our comments, mm -hmm. but, you know, moving forward, you know, moving if we forward, come up, come up mean, against I, another project, I mean, the city has a vision. We do. And, and it sounds like we're struggling with how this fits into the vision. And, right? and asking for things that are realistic, um, you know, creating a storefront space in a building like this that can accommodate restaurants. I mean, they need, you know, restrooms, you know, public restrooms. They need management offices. I mean, it, I've learned that there's just nothing simple about it unless you put a microwave and a coffee maker in there. And, <laughs> and really there's just not the market to bear that all over town. So the you know, 914 
The 914 recommendation from the PRC states that the proposed use is not consistent with Rochester 2034. So you did do that. Yeah, and also East Main Arts and Market. And it also says in East Main Arts and Market District Plan and adopted area, adopted special area plan. No, I, I would say that that's pretty important. I would really uh, support Kevin on that. Anna, what was that? Uh, repeat that, say that again. The, I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah, well. And repeat it. I'll, I'll show it and say it. <laughs> I see. I think it's good to show it though, because they're going to keep coming back to it. Well. Okay, so here I am at the top of page two, first paragraph of page two. Proposed use is not consistent with Rochester 2034, the comp plan, and the East Main Arts and Main Market District plan and adopted special area plan. Both of these plans call for development in this area to be a, a mix of uses that shift away from auto-oriented development and contribute to the pedestrian act pedestrian activity and street level vibrancy. But where I am is, and where I want to make sure that we, we, if you are going to deny that we pay attention to is the PRC identified a suitable mitigating measure to incorporate a commercial component along the street frontage on the ground level of the proposed addition. Such, whoa, such commercial uses would contribute to pedestrian activity and would include an active facade achieved through window openings, which would not display permanent interior structures. Um, so if you're going, if they did that and now you're going to deny it again, I do think that's for me problematic from a consistency point of view, but you do um, also go into some actual mitigating measures. So we should read those. Um, first floor active use, self-storage is not a permitted use. Any proposed building with frontage must contribute to the pedestrian realm streetscape experience by incorporating ground level commercial space along the entire street frontage. So um, they have done that um, with the exception of the riser room there and the staircase. Um, okay, let's go back. Yeah, and I guess technically speaking that, um, what are they calling it, the leasing office? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if that technically speaking meets that requirement, but I don't. I, I would say it know. does, Kevin. It is an it is an, it is an open commercial place use. that's going to be occupied and used and has transparency. So I'm not sure why it would not. That's what I'm saying. Technically, it prob you're probably right, but pr uh, practically and realistically, that's not adding any activity to the street level. You don't think people will buy tape and boxes and all that stuff? Not at any kind of level that would be noticeable. Okay. <laughs> Only if they're especially going given that there's a self storage stuff. space right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> With the inclusion of ground level commerce space along the street frontage, the PRC is amenable to allocating the remaining space to the proposed addition to be used as self service storage. The applicant shall consider proposing a mixed use building, one which incorporates ground floor commercial use along Railroad Street. Options toward achieving this can include subdividing the front portion of property to create a commercial development site or partnering with the commercial developer to assist. Uh, transparency shall be increased. Uh, they did that window openings facing permanent interior structures are not permitted. They got rid of those. The proposed addition should reflect the industrial building design elements of the existing concrete building. The proposed parapet is an unnecessary architectural feature and could be removed. I don't know if that was a parapet or not that we were looking at, but I believe um, what they have done responded to that and they are willing to do what Roger has asked um, with just that slight bump up as long as nobody else objects to it. What does that um, existing building look like? Uh, we can pull that up. But before we do that, Anna, was that the end of it? Or was there another page? That was the second page. We didn't read the first page. I don't know oh. if you want to read the first page. Are there many? Oh, no, I don't need the findings. I just really want to make sure that we're consistent uh, yeah. in terms of I got, whether or not they did like what we asked. The specific actions, I don't know if this is like, they just kind of said, they kind of provided like, you could subdivide it, you could change the composition of the space or partner with somebody who does dabble in this line of work. I don't know if that's right. Yeah. But um, let's look at that existing building for Roger. So having read that, I mean, I really, I would really find it problematic to deny it when they've done what you asked them to do. Um, I think yeah. the one place where there is wiggle room is whether or not you consider that commercial space 
a viable commercial space given the parameters they gave you. That includes the size of it, um, the proposed uses of it, all the stuff surrounding that space. Yeah, and as, as was pointed out, I think the viability of that commercial space is compromised somewhat by them precluding the option of a restaurant, which is probably the most likely business that would work in an area like this and in, in, a, in a market like ours. Oh, Whether or not gonna... that's a deal breaker, I don't know. I just want to point out that it has that um, viability has been compromised. I'm going to just also go through the, the uses in case there are other uses you think that are limited by the design that you would consider important. So give me one second while Anna's pulling that up. Okay, so outdoor market, uh, single family, nope, multifamily dwellings, mixed uses, live workspaces, offices, semi public and semi public uses, agriculture, warehouse, wholesale, retail sales and service, bars, restaurants, and the like manufacturing, parks and recreation, places of worship, public entertainment, limited entertainment. And then there's some specially, but these are especially permitted, but they're all related to storage and whatnot. So, I mean, from my point of view, the only one that the design is currently limiting is, is not having the infrastructure for a bar restaurant. Um, I also am not terribly comfortable with the 20 foot depth. Um, but I kind of go back and forth on that because it is nice to have small retail space for those that aren't ready to create large commercial structures. Um, we don't have anyone from mm -hmm. real estate here, do we, to talk about what actually is renting? Does anybody know what's actually renting in the city? Is it smaller or larger spaces? Dana, might you be able to, I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, Dana, but I feel like you might dabble a little bit in this world. Um, you know, my observation just from, you know, what I've seen is that um, it's larger spaces. Um, you know, I don't know why, you know, for the most part, folks, um, particularly renters, don't have any storage space. So, I mean, there's an occasional, you know, maybe a space, you know, a basement may be partitioned out. So you have a little bit of storage, but for the most part, um, renters don't have storage space. So access to storage. Oh, this, this business is actually booming for some reason. I mean, I guess that's the reason. But. So access to storage uh, infrastructure for, um, restaurant bar use since that's uh, one of the most uh, viable uses for this space. Viable, I'll figure out a way to say it, but it's one of the things that would make it more likely to rent. Yeah, it's compatible with the character and use of the area for the public right now. And that's, would that is increase the, the likelihood of finding a tenant. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, you can drive around the city and sort of see the smaller storefronts um, are just not that prevalent um, from a marketing, successful marketable standpoint. They're just right, and, and, the, and I think the ones that work are the ones that start out with the intentions of a true mixed use building. And again, that's not a criticism of the developer or the architects because their intention was to expand storage space, and that's that's fine. Um, but the likelihood of uh, sort uh, sort of an afterthought of inclusion uh, of the commercial space, which is it's only an afterthought because we asked them, not not because I'm criticizing where they're coming from. Um, but the likelihood of a, of an afterthought type commercial space succeeding is I think is much lower than someone who intends to start out with a mixed use building, which is what we're seeing with some of the inner loop East projects where, you know, the developer saying, all right, this is going to be a mix of residential and a res restaurant space. And we are going to actively court um, restaurateurs to, to 
look at this space. And I think that's just more likely to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think they need to provide tenant toilets. <laughs> well, that's going to be required no matter what. The tenant I know, is. but I think, I think they should. Well, isn't, isn't that one in the hallway for that? No, I think that's not? for customers of the storage unit. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. Cause there's no door from the tenant space to get there. Oh, right, yeah. And I think they haven't out. shown it because they don't know what the tenant is, but I think- right. um, No, they did say that. Yeah, but I, I think it's too, I'll just, I think it's too small. I'd like to see it go to that line of those 10 by 10 units. So that it, can accommodate, so that it can accommodate, so that it can accommodate, so that it can accommodate toilets, possibly a kitchen if it's a restaurant. Um, and storage space. I, I, I think it's too small to be viable right now. So that would give them what, 600 more square feet? Uh, it was oh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, yes, 600 more square feet. I, you know, I think that's reasonable, Roseanne. And I, I just wanna go back to a point that Holly made earlier is, and I don't know how this works, but how much harder would it then be to incorporate stacks and other um, infrastructure that could potentially go with a restaurant into a building like that when the upper floors are storage units. Is that I think possible? I think this early in the game, it's certainly going to have an impact on it, but it's certainly something that they can do. To it's just a vertical my, shaft. My building code two cents. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead. you can vent out the sidewall, uh, oh. but the concern being there is that this you we don't want them to vent out the front facade obviously right right so if they figured out a way to vent out the side as opposed to going up through all the upper floors well i think we'd have to say through the upper floors or to the whatever direction that is because we don't want it coming out on the two storefront sides right is that i don't know what direction that is actually because this unless is Unless they're making donuts, which I wouldn't mind if they're venting out the food. <laughs> so, but even donuts, Kevin, look at all the stuff being vented out of Dunkin' Donuts right around the corner from us. <laughs> yeah. So through the Just, top or, um, Anna, do we know what side that um, staircase side is? Direction? Like, yeah. Northwest. Is that west? Oh, there it is. It's no, the that's west side, yeah. Northwest? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they know. might look at if you and who's over that, there? Who, who are we going to really upset by if they do that? Do you want to zoom back in a sec? Let's go to their site plan and see, see, see if we're right on the line there. Is there an upper floor plan? No. No? Negative. Really? I would assume it's all just storage, the whole. Yeah, yeah I would assume yeah. so too, but I was just. Okay, okay, so we do have a little bit of a setback there for them to put a, a fan or something. To put a hood out the so side. In it the is floor kind of close plan, to the property line. Yeah, in the floor plan next to the lift, there was sort of a really small storage space. Yeah, like a 10 times five. So maybe that just becomes a chase uh, for utilities and stacks and other things that need to go all the way through. I mean, I think it's it's safe enough. Uh, I don't think we need to tell them where to put it, but I do think we need to tell them that we want right. um, we want provisions for a for a shaft. Yeah. Um, I think that would to accommodate to accommodate infrastructure for a restaurant. Or bar um, to take this in a slightly different direction, and I'm just kind of throwing this out there. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, but being that there is definitely some concern with the use, can we condition that? How do I want to say this? It's almost like we don't want the zoning board to consider our approval or denial either way when they're making their decision. We want them to decide independently based on their criteria, whether they feel that this is a viable use or not. So can we, is that worth conditioning that in some way or is that just too wacky? <laughs> no, I, I think I, well, I think um, because 
this went to the PRC that the opinion of the PRC needs to be shared with the zoning board and will be shared with the zoning board. Um, the zoning board will do their own criteria, but they can they can take uh, the opinion of the PRC into account, uh, just as if we had a, you just as if you were an expert witness kind of thing or, a, or sure. But or if we a, if we end up recommending approved on condition, mm -hmm. I don't think we want that approved to translate to zoning board saying, oh, the PRC's review thinks they're they're hunky dory with it because there's definitely concern. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think it's so. I think in in establishing, and and I'm getting a little nervous because I have a seven o'clock. <laughs> um, in in establishing, uh, so it sounds like we're talking about approve with condition, or recommend approve with condition. But I think you can in writing that approve with condition, you can say that you know you that you still remain fundamentally concerned that the expansion of the use is not appropriate for this district and that development of a mis mixed use building on this frontage uh, would be a better option. Um, and then you can say, just like you did before, in the event that that this use, in the event that this use uh, is granted the area variance, the PRC recommends the following mitigating measures. And that would be infrastructure to allow for a bar restaurant, a larger footprint if, footprint if everybody agrees to that. Um, and, um, you know, infrastructure under the slab to allow for plumbing for toilets and kitchens. Um, does, does that answer your question? Does that do yep. what you wanted it to do? Okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> not, go ahead, Kevin. I'm not uh, really. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead, Matt. I, I, I guess based on what we reviewed the first time, our recommendations have been follow, followed. So it's hard to deny based on that principle. Um, but the concern is clearly with the proposed use and not with the design of the building strictly. So it, this I think differs from a lot of the other PRC reviews that we do where we're looking at the building design, we're looking at the transparency based on the building design and not based on what's happening inside the building necessarily. So we're, we're kind of making a recommendation here that's not the norm per se. Um, so we want the rest of the process to understand that we have spent quite a bit of time deliberating and reviewing this <laughs> um, and it's not just a yes or no. Yeah, and I think the um, the concern about use is at multiple levels, pun intended, <laughs> because there's concern about the viability of the first floor space, and I think Roseanne is making some reasonable suggestions for mitigating that. Um, but there's still the fundamental concern about the the massive remainder of this building being appropriate uh, for this area and and being inconsistent with. Uh, the comprehensive plan and the neighborhood plan that isn't necessarily being addressed by um, ho hoping a restaurant will go in there or, or trying to accommodate a restaurant. Um, because, you know, activity generating is not just coming from a first floor active use. It's also coming from uh, the use of the upper floors as well. And in this, you know, in this case, having, people living there would, would be the thing that would create more activity or at least offices. And I understand that's not in, in the, in store spaces um, portfolio. That's not what they do. So I'm not expecting that they would do that. Uh, but so there still is that fundamental issue with whether or not storage in this budding part of our city is, is even appropriate. So I, I guess I've, I don't know the ins and outs of the technicalities of this process, but I'll just say I'm leaning towards a, a motion to deny. Okay, so I would just question what the basis is if they've done the mitigation that you requested. You can still do it, but I, I, I'm looking for credibility when this goes to the zoning board. Um, sure. That's yeah. the only reason I'm raising it. Yeah, um, and I don't, you know, I didn't necessarily like review the letter in any kind of detail before it was submitted, so I'm. Um, 
I don't know if I'm feeling bound to that, but in terms of the process, I guess we have to refer to that. And um, Hey, Kevin, were you in the first meeting then? Yes. Yeah, that's what I... Um, so I, th I think it, it remains inconsistent with, with the plans, even though they've made an attempt to address some of our mitigating suggestions. And like I said earlier, even though technically this is an extension of a non-conforming use, functionally, it's, it's the establishment of uh, a use that is really outside of the spirit and the purpose of, of this district. on a pretty large scale. So that's just my take, but I don't know if, Roseanne, to your point, I don't know if that crosses the threshold of being legitimate denial. I'd, so I don't I know. know, I'm sorry, I'm just letting the people know at my seven that I'm definitely going to be late. Um, I would like to know, so you're very clear, if everybody else could maybe just straw poll it, because it sounds like Matt is a uh, approved with conditions because you've been a bit clear too. Everybody else, I'm not sure where you stand. So maybe Anne could do, yeah. Anna could just do a straw poll, whether you're leaning towards approved with conditions or, or deny. And Holly, I'm sorry, I just got to let them know I'm not going to make it on time. Ellie, you had your hand up. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say um, at this point, based on what we had told them before, I'm inclined to do approve with conditions and the condition being that we uh, create a commercial space that would be amenable to uh, restaurants and eateries. Um, and Matt, you echo that? Yeah. Um, I, I, with the understanding with what I was saying before that the zoning board is also reviewing the viability of creating this use that's not allowed in this zoning district. With the so preface I'm, that indicates we're still not happy with the use being there. Right. And that they so should evaluate that based I, on their I'm, own criteria. I'm hoping and I'm thinking, and I've got my fingers crossed, Ke Kevin, that they're also looking at the, the uh, 2034 plan and everything else when they do their review, um, because that's specifically what they're reviewing in that part of the process. And Kevin, you would be denied on the basis that it's not compliant with 2034 as set forth in the recommendation letter. Yeah, and the East Main Arts and Market Study. Neighbor adopted neighborhood plan. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, boy, it seems like this has been around forever. I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, how many months have we been looking at this? It's long. I mean, it's a long, long time. Yeah, so uh, you know, I I would be um, in support of approving with with conditions. I think that um, you know what we had just talked about making. I, I mean, in order for any kind of commercial space to be successful, there we have to be able to have the widest variety of commercial opportunities, which means you have to allow restaurant or some kind of food. Um, based services. So there's there's got to be an accommodation for that. Um, I, I think what we're seeing happen all the way down Railroad Street could absolutely extend um, down to here. But those are the of the businesses that we're seeing that are successful. I mean, they're either, you know, breweries or brew houses or restaurants or food based businesses. So I, uh, I would Mr. be okay with that. Mr. Brown. <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, uh, I, I guess, oh, geez, I'm really not happy with the bulk of this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't have any problems with the first floor aspect. It would be, I could see some sort of a, of a, of an arts kind of, uh, oh, tenancy there, or, I mean, certainly it'd be nice if there was a restaurant, but I could see different uses for that. And over time, it may not happen for uh, a few years until that happened. I have problems with the upper upper area though, and what, and the, the just the, uh, the, the, the look of that. I don't have a problem with the use, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's I mean, an area, 
like this and, and in, in the whole neighborhood area could use a storage facility like this. But if it was, if visually it had a, it was a lot better than what it, what they're proposing, uh, I'd be more, I'd be more apt to um, approve it. The problem is, is what when on occurred at the last PRC, and they have certainly tried to, you know, uh, mitigate and to um, to address some of the issues that that uh, you, you guys, um, you know, brought up. So I to deny to deny it after they tried to to, um, you know, yeah, I, I, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I, you know, if, if I was to do this, um, I would probably deny this um, for a lot of the reasons that were spoke, that were brought up, 2034 plan and the, uh, the, the urban village, recommendations and stuff but I'm I'm finding myself sort of uh, coming in at the tail end of this and um, I'm not Roger I think coherent on all of this but uh, <laughs> so I'm on the fence as far as one way or the other whether to approve it uh, approve it with conditions I suppose. But that doesn't solve the issue for me with the um, with what it looks above the first floor and how that is uh, intrusive in this whole area. Just so, to note, Roger, when we reviewed it the first time, I think there was some consideration of the massing of the existing building. Yeah, um, there was. Yeah. And basically, it's just a big warehouse building without any windows. <laughs> uh, be that as it is, I, I think that was considered when um, when everyone was looking at the proposed new massing. Yeah, here's a case where, and I, and you know, David wasn't able to be involved with the discussion, but here's a case where the three architects together could have had a you know, could have talked about this a lot more. Um, and, and at that meeting, there was only Jim Yarrington. This meeting, it's just me. And um, it, it, it's, it's, it's really good when all three of us together can, Roger. can discuss on a, you know, on a, on a problem like this. Roger, there's a hypothetical motion on the table to approve on condition uh, condition being that provisions to make uh, to make it a more conducive retail space is on the table. So far, I have three that would uh, vote yay on that approval on condition, and one that would deny it. Where do you think you would stand? And I'm sorry, Anne. I think that would also need to include Matt's suggested suggested condition about is that the, the intro statement about not being in support of the use. Yep. Okay. Intro statement that it's not a viable. Okay, got it. So not where... that it's not a viable, but that the, the PRC fundamentally has an issue with this use in the PV. Uh, so there's a fun so the, the PRC has a fundamental issue with the use in this PRC. However, given that there was a, an attempt to, to address the mitigating measures measures, there's an approval on condition that they just make it a more robust retail space, one that could kind of accommodate a space that's reflective of the market being a restaurant. My, is that, that's really worried. Yeah, we can, we can okay. work on yeah. the wording, but I think um, we should also stress that the, the uh, yeah, that it's, yeah, we can so work on the being, wording. That being the hypothetical motion on the table, Roger, with three. Okay, well, I, I, you know, the more you, <laughs> you know, I, I guess I could go with that. And, and approve that? I would be a yes to that, yeah. Okay, so then we have five yays and one nay at, for a straw poll. Okay, 
So Did we missed someone. One, two, three. I, Sabrina oh. and Donna, you guys are kind of like a like you're not voting members, correct? No, they're here okay. at our request for advice. No, then that's the six that we would have. Okay. Um, curious though, how would you vote? If you could tell us quickly. <laughs> Me? Oh, those two. Oh no, Donna and, and Sabrina. I think the fundamental issue was it doesn't meet the comprehensive plan or the East Main Market District. And at the last meeting, we were reluctant to just say flat out no without offering some type of mitigation. And now it sounds like the mitigation is what's getting the approval. So had we have just said flat out no, we probably wouldn't be having this very extended conversation. And so I would... So I would you, just hate to drive down there, you know, five years from now and look at it and say that was a missed opportunity for the city of Rochester. We've got we've got storage, you know, which not to say that it wouldn't be used. It would be. But I just think there's better places in Rochester that would, you know, wouldn't we wouldn't have to have so much conversation about it. That's all. OK. Mm, yeah, it's true. Sabrina. Probably deny. Okay. And Roger, where did you fall? Like, sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really interesting because I I really think that the 2034 plan is an important document, and it lays out things that are you know critical to the development of this city, and. Uh, again for me it comes down with what this thing looks like I don't have a problem with the upper floors being storage I know there's a way that you could design that to make it uh, much more interesting and much more transparent Okay. So, um, I mean, I could easily, I probably, I would have been on board with you guys and des, and denied it in the first round. Um, well, and, I mean, we can uh, talk maybe, about that from a general point of view, but I, I, I do think it's important to provide uh, mitigation if you, if you truly believe it's mitigation. Um, so. Do that again. Yeah, no. Uh, for future projects, I mean, I think I think the mitigation really needs. I mean, we need to think of the situation in future projects that if if you're going to to say deny, but that you you know that you would consider this mitigation, that that mitigation really needs to be something right, that would convince you, you to again, do the project. Did uh, was the twenty thirty four plan and the um, and and the uh, the urban village plan discussed enough in the in the first um, you know reaction of the PRC um, the, so I, they I need they, they yeah. couldn't mitigate yes they could they could mitigate that I get that. they haven't mitigated that so I mean we, we we need to wrap this this up. Because I know. I, okay. So so let me just throw this out there. I think one of two things have to happen. One is that we have enough people who are willing to approve on condition. Sure. Um, but if we have enough people that want to deny, then you have to you know make a motion to deny based on like you know after further consideration and in appreciation of the attempts at mitigation you know, we've determined that, that it isn't sufficient. I mean, something like that. Um, but where was our store poll? Sorry. <laughs> um, five approve on condition, one deny. And it okay. seems like Roger might be flipping to the other side. wild card. Okay. Um, so having said that, if people uh, just new straw poll, um, just to make sure that I'm not forcing anyone into an approval with condition because of what I said about them meeting the mitigation. Um, if you feel strongly enough and you wanted to come up with a statement like that, um, would anybody else switch sides to a denial? 
I would still I would still be approved with. All permission. right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to switch sides to denial because I think Wild that card. there are ways okay. that the exterior of this building can be can 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 be compatible to the uh, to the area to the neighborhood to the 2034 plan and and everything else. Fair enough. They haven't um, done that. I would say approve with condition. Um, Holly? Approve with condition. Matt? Yeah, I'd, I think I'd say the same. Uh, Kevin, you would be denial? Correct. And uh, Dana? Yeah, I'm still approved. With approve with condition. condition. So we yeah. would still have four. Did I miss anyone? No. Okay, Except we yourself. lost, uh, we had another architect here. I guess we lost him at some point. Uh, he has a conflict on this one. So he yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So we have four to three then. Correct. Okay. Four. Would someone no, like no, to no, make no, a motion? Wait, wait, wait. One second. Oh. Four to two. Four to two. Four to two. Sorry. Thank you. Um, then would someone like to make an actual motion? I just think as the secretary, it's not right for me to make the motion. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a second? I will set up. Oh. Yeah, I guess I can second. I'll second. All right, a motion is on the table to approve on condition with the preface that this is not a suitable use for the area. Condition being that the retail component be expanded to accommodate a restaurant use which would involve expanding that space itself and providing and making provisions for like the ventilation system and what have you. Um, yeah, we'll then, need to work on the language and I can tell we're all very tired, but we'll, but I think enlarging the space and providing infrastructure for additional tenant options to increase the viability of the space. If you, that's right, kind I of mean, the wording I would use just to make sure people are comfortable. I'll call upon you and then ask if you're, and just let me know if you're a yay or nay. Holly Barrett. <laughs> And this is a yay to approve on condition. Oh, yay. Mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly? I'm a no. Dana Miller? Yes. Uh, Roger Brown? No. Matt Vanderwall? Yep. Roseanne Khalil? Yes. All right, by a vote of four, or yeah, four, two, zero, the motion to approve on condition passes in the affirmative or to recommend approval on condition. On condition. Okay. Thank you all. I know that was super, super tough. And, um, you know, it is going to be Anna and I going forward. So I've taken note of some of the general issues you guys raised and we'll, we'll try to work on that. Um, Good job on the first one. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Hi, hi, Roseanne. All right. Bye guys. Thank you so awesome. much. Um, What's our process for getting these out? Just so I, we need to get the. Type them up and we send them out and then they take them to the.